So what I will call the, um, <coughs> the order the public hearing for the Town of Sebastopol comprehensive plan for Monday, August 11th at 7 o'clock. So that you know who we are, I'll introduce the uh, town board. I'm Leo Zipper, the town chairman. Tom German, the supervisor to my far right. You want to make a motion or say aye? Or... Aye. 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 Dan Whipple is next. Aye. Chuck, Chuck Tice. Both. And John Stobbinus. Aye. And I'll let the members of the Comprehensive Plan Committee introduce themselves. We'll start way on the left with Bart. Bart Munson. Pete Hearth. Leif Landbach. Charlie Jarman. Dick Whiten, Dick Chappelle, Bob Strayer, and Sandy Jordans. Okay, and the person at the far end of the table who has all the information and is working for Omni Group that helped in the formulation of our comprehensive plan is Jeff Sanders. Um, the process that we follow in this particular procedure will be, will allow the public to participate, but we do not want it to get out of hand. So we, we are going to restrict the, the time element to what you wish to present to three, three minutes per individual. And if you're here speaking for a group, we'll allow you to go to five minutes. We do not want someone to say, oh, by the way, I forgot to say something, and I want to add again. You will have that opportunity, but you'll have to wait your turn until everyone else has spoken. Just remember that this is not a question and answer session, but it's an opportunity for you to express your opinion. The finalized product will come after one more meeting before it gets on to the uh, plan commission that needs to be appointed in the future and maybe even two if we don't come to some kind of uh, agreement on it. So you still have some time and we'll, we'll accept any constructive criticism that you do have. Hopefully you took a look at the maps to find out what the changes are going to be. So with that in mind, I'm going to turn the entire procedure over to uh, John Stavinis, who has been the chair of this group and uh, been working on for how many years, John? Uh, probably going on two now. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, Go ahead. Jeff uh, Sanders has a little short presentation, and then we will get on to the public participation after that. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Jeff for your presentation. Thanks, Tom. Um, first of all, the question is, you know, why do we create a plan? Um, well, to guide land use decisions in the future is one obvious reason. Uh, to identify the tools necessary to achieve future goals and visions, whatever those goals and visions are. And then finally, to comply with statutes. So Wisconsin Statute 66-1001, um, otherwise known as Wisconsin's Comprehensive Planning Law, has basically says that every municipality in the state, every town, village, city, county, regional plan commission, must by January 1, 2010, have one of these documents in place, approved and adopted at the local level, consistent with state statutes, in order to retain local land use decision making processes. So without this document, without the town having gone through this process, agreed to a plan and adopted the plan, come January 1, 2010, many decisions that either are currently made at the town level or could in the future be made at the town level would not be made at the town level. Whether or not they'd be made by the county, regional plan commission, that's an interesting question. Um, but for the most part, the statutes say, do this plan, you retain your, your right for local land use decision making in the future. So what is a plan? Well, Act 9, again, um, identifies the nine elements that must be addressed in a comprehensive plan, um, which are slightly different than chapters. Um, if you notice, if you look through the plan, there are 12 chapters in the plan but those 12 chapters correspond to these nine elements. Issues and opportunities essentially describes the community 
describes your opinion as residents, landowners, business owners um, about the community. It incorporates, certainly in chapter two, a summary of the meetings that we've held to date, um, which I'll go through in a moment. Um, the, community, the community survey that was conducted prior to this planning process commencing. I think housing and transportation are pretty self-explained. Uh, utilities and community facilities refers to everything from churches and schools to wastewater treatment to telecommunications, fire protection, etc. Agricultural, natural, and cultural resources and economic development, again, are relatively um, self-explanatory. Uh, land use has two elements to it. There are chapters 9 and 10 in the plan. Chapter 9 is existing land use. It's a description of this community today, or perhaps more accurately, a description of this community about nine months ago or eight months ago. Um, and then chapter 10 is future land use, and that's reflected by the map that you see to my right up here. Um, and then finally, there's intergovernmental cooperation and implementation. Intergovernmental cooperation is a chapter which describes the way in which this community will work with adjoining communities, the county, regional planning commission, school districts, the state, and other parties to identify opportunities for um, cooperation and collaboration, to establish processes for remediation of whatever um, potential conflicts might occur in the future. Or May, may be occurring right now. And finally, implementation. Implementation is as it sounds. It's the, the way in which the town of Sevastopol will implement or will put into place its plan. So how was the plan developed? Well, back in September 2006, so John, two years is pretty close. Um, we had a kickoff meeting that was held in this room. Um, during that meeting, we had a SWOT and values exercise. Uh, SWAT's an acronym that stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. Um, for those of you who participated in that meeting, you'll recall it. Again, the summary of that meeting is in Chapter 2. Uh, the values exercise is a simple exercise where I, asked you, where I asked you to identify the things that you value most about this community. You know, if someone were to say, why do you live in Sevastopol? What would your response be? And that's essentially what the purpose of that exercise was. Um, from 2006 through 2008, um, we presented draft chapters and maps followed by a review and recommendation process. Um, there were meetings that occurred monthly, in some cases more than once during a month by the plan committee. Um, those chapters and the revisions to those chapters were posted on the project webpage. In November of 2006, we had a vision meeting, again in this room where we had a large piece of paper up on the wall. And through asking a series of questions, we proceeded to fill up that paper with the visions that you as a community have of the future regarding housing, transportation, and the other elements I mentioned earlier. In June 2007, we had the mid-course mapping meeting at the saloon. What was, I forgot the name of it. At the Institute, thank you. Um, we had the mid-course mapping meeting at the Institute Saloon where each one of you who participated were given a blank map, actually two blank maps. And we walked you through exercises which allowed me an opportunity to learn from you what you value most in terms of land uses within this community. And then the second exercise was an opportunity for you to direct the development of the future land use map based upon your opinions about where housing should go and where trails should go and that sort of thing. And on this map over here, maybe after the hearing if you want to take a look, the composite attitude map and the majority opinion map are the maps that resulted from all the individual maps that you as community put together that evening. And that brings, oh, in January of 2008, we had an intergovernmental meeting where we asked people from the adjoining towns, from the county, DNR, and other parties to sit down and talk with us. I believe we had three people that showed up, one from Whitefish Dunes, one from Jacksonport, was it, perhaps? And I think someone from one of the school districts, perhaps, but. Um, that, that could be. And then uh, June 2008, open house public hearing. Obviously, it's not June 2008, it's August 2008. My apologies for the typo. That brings us to this evening. Each chapter was guided by state requirements. In other words, the state established a framework for chapters. They did not tell communities in the state what or how to address specific elements. They just said that these are some of the elements that you must address in your plan. The example I've used in the past is in the transportation chapter, there's a section on airports. 
that must occur or must be included in every comprehensive plan. Now, that is not to presume that the town of Sevastopol should build an airport or has a need for an airport. It does say, that, however, that whether or not you have an airport, you have to address that issue in your plan. And it could be as simple as saying there's no airport in the town of Sevastopol. We have no plans for the future, in the future, of constructing an airport in Sevastopol. However, nearby airports include Cherryland, Austin Straubel, et cetera. Um, they're based upon community visions. They're based upon your responses to those questions during those exercises. So if the bulk of the community said, you know, we want to protect trees, well, the plan was drafted to make sure that trees were protected. Um, there included input from the community survey. Again, the survey that preceded my involvement in this planning process. Uh, the SWOT exercise and the values exercises included inventories of existing conditions. And based upon that information, draft chapters were drafted, presented, discussed, and revised till we get to the point where we are right now. The future land use be map began with the existing land use map as the foundation. So if you look at the existing land use map, which would, be the, which would be the top left corner of the tile map to the left, if you were to compare that map with the future land use map, the bigger one to your right, um, you'll see that about 90 to 95% of the community remains unchanged. In other words, the future vision that this community had for the town, that, that you had for the town of Sevastopol 20 years down the road is essentially the same as it is today with some exceptions, those exceptions being around Balmian Institute, being around the corridor of Highway 40, 4257, and some other places throughout the community. But for the most part, this community did not envision significant changes in land use during the next 20 years, nor did it desire significant changes in land use in the next 20 years. Um, again, I mentioned that maps were util utilized for a mapping exercise. Um, data, the data that Omni used to construct these maps was data or were data, I guess, um, that were provided by Door County Planning Department, were provided by Bay Lake Regional Planning, in some cases the DNR and DOT and other sources. So we did not create new data in order to make the bulk of the maps, the one exception being the future land use map. And then finally, these maps were reviews, re reviewed and revised through the process at, in, a, in a manner similar to the comprehensive plan. The goals, objectives, and policies of the comprehensive plan, basically chapter 12 of the document you have, um, include housing, transportation, utilities, community facilities, agriculture, natural culture resource, economic development, land use, and intergovernmental cooperation. And what I'd like to do briefly is just go through some of the key objectives um, that the plan identifies, and then we'll, I'll sit down and the public hearing will commence. Um, first of all, to encourage low impact housing to develop a pedestrian and bicycle plan for the community. And that was done as a, essentially as a follow-up or an add-on to much of the bicycle and pedestrian work that's been done in the past. Uh, the county, Bay Lake Regional Planning, and DOT have all in various ways um, put together plans for bicycle and pedestrian access in the community. One of the things that the plan committee rec or, um, recognized early on, and, I, and certainly was reflected during the mapping exercise, is the previous bike plans called for trails to go through Sevastopol. In other words, to get you from Sturgeon Bay to the northern part of the peninsula. There were no plans for integration within Sevastopol. So when you look at the future land use map, the dashed lines reflect that original Bay Lake Regional Planning Commission um, proposal, whereas the solid brown lines that tend to be on east-west axes resulted from the mapping exercise in this process. Um, and you know, we've talked with uh, Bay Lake Regional Planning, the county, and WSDOT in terms of the extension of the Anape Trail. Uh, develop a town of Sevastopol subdivision ordinance. That's one of the th re recommendations that came out of the planning process. <clears throat> to identify potential candidates for rustic road status. Um, rustic road is essentially one of those things that when a community has one, they can kind of be proud of it. They can brag because there are certain criteria that have to be met, which the most of that criteria exists on a couple roads here. Um, develop a capital improvements plan to budget for future town expenditures work with the county on a wind energy ordinance. You know, that's something that may change dramatically in the near future because the state is more likely than not gonna take a, make a decision in the next 18 months on wind energy uh, to develop a park plan for the community, to establish a network of green corridors and stream buffers throughout, or stream buffers throughout the community, to encourage, encourage native prairies, native plants, 
uh, to require conservation design for future subdivisions, to inventory historic properties and cultural resources. And the next steps are basically, once this meeting concludes, um, your comments, your testimony in favor of or in opposition to the plan or its elements will be recorded. The plan committee will take that testimony, they'll review it, and they'll determine whether or not the plan in its current state should be revised to reflect the goals or, or um, uh, the goals or intents of, those, of the testimony provided tonight. Um, at some point, the plan committee that you see before you will be dissolved and a plan commission will be formed. That will be at the discretion of Mr. Zipper, the town chair. Once that plan commission is formed, it's incumbent upon them to recommend the plan to the town board for approval and adoption. But that doesn't happen until you as a community have said, essentially, this is our plan, this is the one we want to go forward with. Once that happens, the, the final deliverables will be produced by me and my colleagues at Omni. Um, that'll include, and this is the answer to Bart's question earlier, uh, it'll include 25 bound colored copies of the document with color maps, one unbound copy which you could take to a print shop and have copies made. There'll also be a CD copy of the document that'll have word format and PDF, and then we'll provide two sets of three by four color maps, essentially two sets of what you see there revised to reflect whatever results from the meeting tonight. Um, finally, there is a requirement, an intergovernmental distribution requirement as part of the statutes. Once you as a community adopt the plan, you are legally required to distribute that plan to all adjoining levels of government, to the county, to the regional plan commission, to the DOT, the DNR, and a handful of other organizations. You're also required to have one at the nearest public library. What I would suggest in the recommendation I have made to you is, or to the plan committee, is to distribute the plan in a CD format, not a hard copy. Um, the copy of the plans that you have tonight, when that's fully printed out in color, it'll cost about $140 to $150 to produce one. 200 pages, color with 11 by 17 color maps. That's an expensive document. I can't imagine you'd wanna be churning those out regularly and handing them out free. That said, if you were to charge your neighbors, you know. City of Sturgeon Bay or, or Town of Jacksonport for their plan, they might in turn turn around and charge you for theirs. So in the end, producing it on a CD is probably more helpful anyway. Um, those communities that'll be interested in your plan will, be, will find the, the CD copy far more useful. In terms of the county and the Regional Plan Commission, all the data that we've produced during this process is the town's property, essentially. So at their discretion, we would convey all of, our, all of our mapping data, everything that we've produced uh, to both Bay Lake Regional Plan Commission and to Door County. That's all I have. Okay, before we go on, I forgot one important uh, person that's in our audience and without our town clerk treasurer, we'd not be able to function. <laughs> Apology accepted. Thank you. Okay, we'll proceed with the public hearing now. Um, it's really helpful that if you're talking about a specific item and you know which chapter it's in, read, tell us which chapter so that the people that have nine chapters can get to that chapter. Would be very helpful. If you know the exact section, maybe read the section too. If you don't, they can get close. So, all right, Lee, if you want to start off, give them how to do it. Did you want to turn that around so you aren't shooting at everybody's back here? Well, I tilt it a little bit, this direction. Well, otherwise, you can. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Leif Lottenbach, I'm a member of the Comprehensive Plan Committee, and a member, as a member of that committee, I respectfully ask that the edits and changes, as described on pages one through six of the introduction of the Comprehensive Plan Draft, be made a part of the plan. You'll find that in the beginning of your packets. Pages one through six uh, kind of outline the minor edits, and changes are noted on separate pages by chapters. 
uh, by chapter, and you'll find those in front of chapters 4, 6, 7, 9, and 10. And we ask that those be read into the plan and be made a part of it. I'll speak longer then. <laughs> Bob is there, so. These are just observations. Uh, quick, Pat Miller, Sebastopol, um, Whitefish Bay, speaking for myself. Um, chapter 10, page 3. And you can cut me off after three minutes, but I don't think I can cover it all in three. Under the third paragraph where the bullets are. Okay, item three, alternative housing development should be located along 42 from Dunn Road south to the city of Sturgeon Bay boundary. Um, so that's extending that commercial area all the way up to Dunn Road. Yes, yeah, so that's, that's a new, <laughs> um, that's quite an extension for alternative housing on that highway. That's my observation. The next one, commercial development, if to be allowed, and who determines that? Well, this, is a, this was from the uh, public, when they did the public surveys. And what, what was the next one for the? The next bullet there, it says commercial development yeah. If to be allowed, so that's still up for question. John, uh, respond. Yes. Um, the, the questions, the questions that Pat is raising right now, um, these statements resulted directly from a community meeting. These are not positions that the comprehensive plan is taking. These were comments that those people who participated in the mid-course mapping meeting essentially said, and what we agreed to do from the beginning of this process is to not edit comments made by the public. In other words, if somebody stood up and said, we need to cut down every tree in the town of Sebastopol, <coughs> that comment would be in the record. It would not be edited. But it's unlikely that the plan itself would have taken a position of, you know, let's go to the hardware store and buy chainsaws. <laughs> so the comments that you have had are not directions the plan is taking, but uh, comment, comments that were reflective of comments made during that meeting. I realize that, and I'm coming, commenting on the comments, I guess, as an individual. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> 
So the if to be allowed is, you know, a, a question that I had. Um, and along the State Highway 57 corridor, northeast of Institute, but it doesn't say how far northeast, and along the joint 4257 corridor. So that means, uh, if I read this correctly, there is no north boundary to this commercial development set. Well, as Jeff said before, this is another public comment. And yes. You know, it's okay. still up to review from the county. I'm just calling it attention to things that struck me okay. as uh, either not completely clear or um, that I have a question about okay. that. Yeah. Um, and I, it's a really good point. What I would say is looking over the comments that were in the majority opinion map, um, what, what we tried to do is accurate, accurately reflect on the majority opinion map the opinions of the people who created those maps. That does not necessarily mean that the future land use map reflects those recommendations. Mm -hmm. And I would go back to my tree comment. Um, so I guess what I'm saying, Pat, is um, first of all, philosophically, I agree with your comments. But the plan itself doesn't follow to the letter those comments made during the meeting. So it's possible a north boundary could be set on that at some point? No, actually, in one way I would say no, because we can't go back in time to this meeting and ask the people who made that comment to establish a north boundary. However, the plan itself can establish a north boundary, just not this yeah. part of it. But the plan itself does identify where those kinds of housing, where alternative housing, where commercial development should go. So in terms of this, the, the plan that we have today, alternative housing is identified in three places and commercial development along the corridor stops at the intersection, at, at the split of 4257. Now, if, if you as a community or Pat, if you, if you don't agree with that, this would be the, the, that would be an appropriate comment to make. I don't like that and they shouldn't be there. Or you do like it and they should stay. Um, but we, we can't edit public comments that were made at public meetings in the past. No, I understand. Okay. Well, that's what, what you just said is what I'm calling attention to. Um, I think that's going quite extensively north to Dunn Road. And you said, are you, are you talking about the commercial development here, no, or are you talking, talking about from, alternative housing? From the um, divide to Dunn Road. Alternative okay, but actually there's not, it doesn't extend all the way up there. There's one area at that intersection that would be identified for alternative housing. And if you and would prefer right that, it, not necessarily. This is, it's a bubble that says in general somewhere in this area. This is not a footprint the way a zoning map would be a footprint. It's a general statement that perhaps alternative housing should be located here. But if you don't agree with that, then you might want to say that you don't think that should be there. I was um, assuming Matt, that it meant two done No, no Matt. Uh, so two, two, three majority separate. Opinion. It's the majority of opinion. Matt. I realize that, yes. So but I thought you were saying that you can add an opinion to it here. So if you weren't in the majority, you can't speak. <laughs> Well, the other item is the, um, it looks like it's to infinity, northeast of Institute. Well, northeast of Institute could go all the way to Ellison Bay. Or all the way to the boundaries of Sebastopol, sorry. All right, you're on my three minutes already, sorry. Okay. I'm very happy to see the uh, sustainability part of this chapter. I think it's excellent that that is a part of it. 10-7. Um, There's one line in the middle of the page, just before the bold typing landscaping. 
It reads, these restrictions can be enforced through zoning, subdivision, and site plan review ordinances. Um, you probably all know that um, the county has had site plan review for many years, and they struggled with it, went back and forth, and finally eliminated it completely. But I think there's value to the site plan review um, because it gives input from the community. And um, I think if it's properly conducted, it's um, worthy of, uh, of uh, merit. So that's a good thing to keep in. Um, the next one, outdoor advertising. 4257 offered desired opportunities for billboard advertising in Sevastopol. Um, I'm glad to see that the next sentence talks about preserving the natural beauty and not obstructing it with, um, with uh, billboards. And um, I think that's it on the, this chapter. Just would like to say that um, um, I'm so happy that the intergovernmental um, uh, part of the document is in there because I think that's so important to be able to work with the adjoining uh, towns and um, to work cooperatively. So I hope that will bear merit. Thank you. Well, uh, your name and address, please. Oh, yeah, Wayne Eastman, 3855 Cherry Road. Uh, I've had probably all of three hours to look through this masterpiece. And, and I'm only going to comment on a couple areas, probably identifies my background, but one of the things that kind of stood out in this plan was in the agricultural area, uh, the plan has uh, identified there should be, I guess, a farm committee. Should be chapter seven. A farm committee. And I kind of curious as to why there was that committee and in the plan there's nine areas that the other nine I don't think they have uh, identified a special committee but uh, I was curious as why that was in there and who would be uh, if a situation came up that a farmer wanted to do something with his land, would this committee, this farm committee, be the person they would go to, or do they go to the town board or whoever for an implementation? The purpose, the purpose of the Agricultural Committee is to be essentially an information source for the Town Board and the Plan Commission, um, a liaison and an educational source for the community at large. It would not have any regulatory authority or any authority really in any sense. Um, the town recognized that potential conflicts between agricultural uses and residential uses in a community that was predominantly agriculture um, would be could be challenging in the future. So one of the recommendations was to establish this committee that would basically be a resource of information for farming issues, for issues between farming areas and residential areas as residential development occurs. Um, it's also something that uh, DATCAP, Department of Ag, Trade and Consumer Protection has suggested as a as an appropriate way of addressing potential future conflicts between residential development and agricultural land, whether it be the odors that result from manure spreading, whether it be you know, large um, pieces of farm equipment on highways, traveling slowly, those kinds of things. So it's not that 
um, you couldn't have committees for other issues. It was because of the issues that were raised um, regarding potential conflicts between egg uses and residential uses that we suggested an agricultural committee. And we had Charlie on our committee fighting for the farmers too. Uh, One farmer here today. We had two, but. All right, do you have anything else? Oh, and the only other area is the chapter 10, the implementation. I see that uh, they identify which particular group that would be involved, and I see the town board is identified of basically pretty much all of the areas that are in charge of the implementation. Is that right? And they also identify the particular year that the, they would want to work on this problem within the township. And I noticed that uh, the most recent or the most critical or the, like the year 209 or uh, that the development issue is the top one in this plan. So apparently that is. Are you asking if the town board has to do something for every one? You're in chapter 12, right? Pardon? You're in chapter 12 implementation? Well, I was looking at, I think, at the, uh, yeah, it is 12. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <coughs> That's all. <coughs> My name is Jim Ebison. I live at 4615 East Bay Shore Circle, Sturgeon Bay. Um, I've, I, this is the first opportunity I've had to look at this. My wife and I have spent the last four and a half winters in Mexico, but we've now decided to return and live permanently in Sebastopol. <laughs> and I, the, the plan looks like it's in full uh, compliance with the 2010 deadline. Uh, having said that, I'm not sure the state legislature is even going to implement any penalties for the failure of any town to do this, but I would say you've done a good job. But I look at the town of Sebastopol, and I know all of you know a great deal more about it than I do. It's the largest township in this county. It's like a land bridge separating the north from the su southern parts of the county. It also is one of the largest residential areas for people living in Sturgeon Bay other than the northern part of Nassawapi. In fact, if you take the commuters from Sebastopol and Nassawapi and the city of Sturgeon Bay, it's, it's more than half of the population of Door County. And when you consider how many snowbirds we have here, it's well more than half. And I further noted that there is a tremendous need in the county, in the city, and in Sebastopol for more housing. And yet the plan seems to emphasize the impact of housing on Sebastopol. The alternative areas that are spread out follow a, a highway or a town corridor. And I don't want to offend anyone, but it would seem to me, it's obvious to me that the more natural places of locating a alternate housing or a planned using development, planned unit development, would be around your educational center and around whatever small commercial units you have, Institute and Valley and already highlighted. Um, a couple other comments. There seems to be a somewhat negative uh, suggestion about wind power. Um, I think all of you have noted that the town of Claybanks has produced a lot of wind and very little logic in its, in, its, in its opposition to wind powers. I have clients who live right under those towers. I've gone down and stood under them 
the, uh, the idea that there's ice flaking off them or there are wind shadows and flickering or that there's electrical in, in interference has no basis whatsoever either in scientific or logical fact. Our state has been slow in the last two administrations, including the present administration, to adopt and, and encourage wind power and yet the state of Minnesota and Illinois are running full ahead and Door County is an obvious place to harvest the winds across this peninsula and make this county independent. I would suggest that the Comprehensive Plan Committee and you on the town board take a little more time about studying that so that it doesn't appear to be negative in your report that you're really giving to the state legislature and your other units in the community and to also try to really carefully plan what areas in Sebastopol could best be used to develop housing, critical housing for this community. And lastly, the 20 unit, which is a zoning matter, a subdivision matter, but should be this 20 uh, acre unit is, is prohibitive, not only in the town of Sebastopol, but in our surrounding towns. If you only want the ultra wealthy to live in Door County, fine. You will deprive most of us of a place to live. I walked across the street from my office and I asked kiddingly the engineer of how much that boat was that was sitting at the dock that Palmer Johnson is just completing. And he says $38 million. I ask you how many people in Door County can afford a boat of $38 million. And most people want to afford a home and they're lucky if they can pay more than 200000 for it. Let's not prohibit in a, in a plan like this that kind of development in our town. Thank you. Well, John, may I just point out something that's in the plan regarding that? Okay. On 1218, you're, you're concerned about the 20-acre ruling. If you look at uh, item number four, under land use elements, Chapter well, it's 1218 in the implementation chapter. It's only one sentence, but we spent considerable time discussing it. It states that we recommend a 20 acre minimum lot size for areas zoned prime agricultural should be reviewed. Considerations should include the effectiveness of preserving farmland and land divisions that are affordable. Even though it's only one sentence, I think it carries considerable amount of weight for the yeah. 12, yeah. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, So, um, we, we, we did spend a fair amount of time discussing that. I'm sorry you didn't like my vote. <laughs> Linda Waite, 5075 Bluff Court, and I have looked at the plan, and I am generally in favor of it. I think all of the issues have been um, addressed, and the committee did a fine job of putting together this plan. Um, having grown up just down the street here on a farm, I, of course, like to see our, our rural atmosphere. I'd like to see that continue. That's probably more of a dream than a reality as more and more houses pop up. Um, I just hope that the board and the committee sees the rural atmosphere as uh, a positive and that um, they, we continue with our rural atmosphere. I'm not sure on the 20-acre rule. I have mixed feelings about that. I do like the idea of an agricultural committee to work with the farmer or the landowner to come up with solutions on that 20-acre rule if that does need to be varied. Um, I'll try to be in order here. Chapter 4 addresses um, the housing chapter. And on the bottom of page 4-6, the very last paragraph addresses rural subdivisions and hamlets, um, that there are few, few rural subdivisions, and I happen to live in one. 
and uh, denser development resides in the hamlets of Velmi and Institute. If you go down along Bark Road, you'll see that that is also densely populated. So a suggestion might be that if subdivisions are going to be regulated, why should not plats be regulated as well? So that's just a suggestion. Um, chapter 6. Um, utilities. I agree with Jim Ebison that we do need to address alternative energy um, possibilities. I know a lot of us think not, my, not in by my backyard, but just remember that utility companies are required to have renewable energy, 25% um, I think shortly, so that the board and the committee definitely look at those possibilities. Um, chapter 5, the transportation. That is the longest chapter in the plan, or I should say it did encompass the most number of pages. But just remember that you did choose to live in a rural community. You can expect to have all the conveniences of the urban cable, garbage pickup, um, you know, bus transportation. Just remember you chose to live in this rural community, community so there are sacrifices to be made. Um, and chapter 10 on page 13, uh, Pat mentioned site plan review. Yes, that was eliminated at the county level, and uh, perhaps the town could um, adopt their own formal site plan review. Pl site plan review. I do think it is a good idea for the board to continue to have that import, input when it comes to um, petitions for change of variance or conditional use permits. I don't know if that would fall under site plan, but just so that we do maintain at least the ability to input at the county level. Um, and then I think that was that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The um, site plan review, I was on the county board when it was developed and when it was discussed and in, in, in cussed. And it was, uh, the site plan review, when it was discontinued, was moved to conditional use permit uh, uses. The reason why they did not want it anymore is because only the neighbors could comment on a site plan review, whereas uh, the conditional use could be commented on by anyone in the county, and that's that's the reason I took it for the county board for kicking it up. Okay. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Lily. Anybody else would like to speak? Victoria Serenich, I live at 4145 Cherry Road in Sevastopol with a Sturgeon Bay zip code, so it confuses me all the time. I have a thank you to the committee and everybody that worked on it, and I didn't participate. I was otherwise occupied, but uh, I think everybody's done a great job, and anything can always be changed if the majority wants to get something changed in the future. Uh, I do agree with Mr. Eberson, Eberson that we need to look at uh, sustainable ways of using our land and preserving our agricultural. I, I kind of blend what uh, Linda was just saying and what Jim said in that we can, the best way to preserve our rural atmosphere is not to spread out houses like we look like a suburb. And if, if when people visit, for instance, Ireland or England, they always say how wonderful and rural it looks like. Well, that's because they don't allow people to go build they have to build, stay in clustered communities where resources are available for energy purposes. After the war, that's the way they kept, uh, they rebuilt the country so easily. The other comment, and I think you do a great job on water, 
and I'm looking at like page 1214 and 1215. I mean, you, we really look at protecting our, ground, our surface water and groundwater, but I don't see, and maybe I just missed it because it's a lot for me to digest, uh, how are we handling our coastal or our attractiveness because we are a lake community and a bay community? I didn't see that we addressed how we might work together with the other government agencies to protect the quality of the, the boating and the attractiveness of, of the lake and the bay for fishermen. You know, it says surface groundwater that runs off for pollution, but it doesn't quite address that it also makes weeds and invasive species, or I missed it. I'm just saying, I don't know how that works, where you put that in, but if we lose our lake and our bay, it's like losing our rural atmosphere, then that's, that's a big reason that my husband and I came up to this area is because of all the beautiful water features. And thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, does anybody else would like to speak? Okay, Pat, you want another three minutes? Passport. Let's go. You're up, Patrick. Stay there while I bring the microphone to you. <laughs> thank you, I could use it. Um, I didn't want to exceed my three minutes by too much, but I do have a real concern about the commercial development from the south boundary of the town to the uh, divide, the 4257. Pardon? The south boundary runs into Sturgeon Bay. Well, wherever this, the zoning, commercial zoning begins all the way to the split, 4257 split. If I'm Remember correctly, the existing um, plan for Sevastopol had commercial development primarily in Valmy and Institute, which I thought was a good idea because those are areas that already exist. But now to extend it, um, as much as this map indicates it would be, is to um, possibly make it look like the entrance to Sturgeon Bay and Nassawapi. And I really have problems with that, and I think a lot of people in Sebastopol would. Um, it's not a very attractive area now, but to make it commercial and to fill it with billboards and that kind of thing, I think will be a deterrent to the beauty and the rural character of, uh, of Sebastopol. Thank you for letting me speak again. Mariah Goody, good. Is it good? Good. 
<laughs> Sorry, Mariah, wherever you are. Um, the letter from Mariah Good in Door County Planning was submitted as part of the public hearing, so it would be entered into the record as written testimony um, pertaining to the comprehensive plan. So the appropriate next step would be, as with all the testimony that people provided um, orally tonight, would be for the plan committee to consider all that testimony and make decisions as to whether or not the testimony should result in a revision to the document as it exists, and if so, in what way. So that would be the next step. So that's where that discussion would occur. And that meeting would be, a pub, as all meetings are, from a statutory standpoint, that would be a public meeting so anybody could participate in it. And is that a copy that could be available to the public? Yes, anything, anything that occurred as part of this meeting is public. It's just there weren't enough copies submitted to the plan committee to supply all the people in the audience, including the consultant. For the record. Is it on the system? Do you have a question? Yes. Yeah. Could that letter then just be put on the website? So I don't know if that's an appropriate thing so that we can see what the comments were because we couldn't hear them because it was written. Absolutely not. <laughs> the short answer is if it's, I mean, yes. So, you know, it's a prerogative of the yeah. committee. Physically, you can. Will it be permitted, I suppose, is the better question. The, the project webpage is a webpage that Omni set up for the town of Sevastopol for this planning process. So if the committee would like it, absolutely. Um, but then we'd need an electronic copy of it or a PDF, you know, that sort of thing. Well, I'm just going to ask that we record as part of testimony for this meeting um, the suggestions made by um, the County of Door Planning Department, Mariah Good, dated August 6, 2008. Okay. Mine says, well, mine says August 6 on the top. That's probably delivery date. August 5th is the date that she wrote it, correct? So that might be something, if everybody knows where the town offices are located, right behind the building we're in, you could just swing by there and pick up a copy of it. Well, we'll be taking stuff back over there, anybody that wants a copy, you can just run it through, just stop over there and you can have a copy of it. All right. Okay, so do we have any more hands, show of hands that want to say anything about the plan? Good, bad, evil? Pat, you want another shot at it? <laughs> Three times and out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's time to go. Watch the Packers. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thank you all for coming.